time for an update. I want to give you uh, insight as to the updates and improvements that have been made on Rad Ray Gun over the last few weeks. Uh, got quite a bit to show off. Um, the first thing, the big thing we did um, to change the gameplay up is we made Rad, the character on the screen, half the size that he used to be. The problem was that he was just too big and clunky in the level and you just didn't feel that you had enough movement and uh, agility when navigating through the levels. So we uh, made him half the size and uh, he's just, he's much more uh, free in the levels and it's going to give us all kinds of abilities. So we're going to take a look at that and then we're actually going to delve into some code. Uh, quite a few of you asked uh, for the last few videos if we could uh, have another code review. So we're going to do that and we're going to show off uh, the new power-up system and then how that's built, uh, what all the power-ups have in common, and then uh, how they're implemented. And then finally, we're going to do uh, something is new. I've never tried this before, but uh, I have quite a few Twitter followers, and I have quite a few uh, YouTube followers. So I'm going to try to kind of mix you guys together and see if we can uh, get even more uh, talking and concepting going on. So I reached out on Twitter, and I said, send me your questions, and I'll answer them uh, in this video. So uh, we'll do that finally, uh, answer your questions. So without further ado... Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the game, and you can see immediately that Rad is half the size that he used to be. He's much smaller, and uh, it makes the level seem that much bigger. And uh, that was really our focus, is to make sure that uh, the player has free reign to move throughout the level, but then also giving us the ability to make really uh, uh, dr dramatic and elaborate levels that uh, should be interesting to play. So. This was a huge improvement, just, just sizing Rad down did so much to improve the gameplay. We also added the ability for him to duck. So uh, again, that he was feeling too stiff and uh, limited in his movement. Now if enemies fire at you, you can duck and then fire back as well. Um, so as you progress through the game though, they're going to get more intricate and uh, levels and, and things like that. So we'll need Rad to kind of improve his abilities as you go. So these are some of the power-ups that you're going to see later on in the game. This first one is the slide ability. So much like Mega Man, Rad Rangan will be able to do a quick slide attack or slide ability. Uh, you can dodge attacks, you can uh, you know avoid falling objects, you can uh, slide under small portions of the level to kind of access different areas as well. So that's the first ability. The next one you'll see is the uh, back dash. So it's it's very similar to the slide, but you can use this mainly to get out of the way. So if somebody's shooting at you or if something's going to fall on you, do the quick back dash and hop out of the way. So between these two abilities, the slide and the back dash, you can already see that Rad has already become much more agile. And uh, the final power up that you can get is the double jump. So at any point during the jump, you get one more opportunity to jump higher. So you'll be able to access uh, higher portions of the level and uh, perhaps even secret areas within the level. Um, and you can see the slide, the back dash, and the double jump just make him much more fun to play. And uh, we were really excited about getting this uh, into the game. And I can tell you, it's going to make the gameplay that much better. And uh, as you saw, we do have uh, power-ups in the game that you can collect. And that's the portion of the code I want to delve into today. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, how all the power-ups are built and uh, what they all have in common and then how we can easily turn out new power-ups going forward. So let's take a look. Alright, so here we are in Visual Studio and I want to take a look at, again, how power-ups are built and uh, how simple it was to get them dropped into the game. I, f I followed a very similar uh, implementation that I did for enemies in that there's basically an interface that all the power-ups uh, inherit from and then they can be managed blindly through a handler that will just traverse through all the power-ups on the screen update them and draw them accordingly so we can see this is the interface I power up every power-up is going to implement this interface and it gives them base attributes such as their ID their X and Y their height and width uh, whether or not they were collected and then a spawn offset X and Y and what that does is by default, uh, each power-up is going to be locked into the grid of tiles that you drop in. But if they're a smaller shape or a more odd shape, and you kind of need them offset from the grid, you can use the uh, X and Y offset to do that. 
Um, then we have three basic methods, initialize, draw, and update. And uh, every one of the power-ups is very simple to implement. You just uh, inherit this interface, uh, fill in the gaps, and you're done. So uh, the portion that goes on top of this is then the handler. So you have a power-up handler class that is a static class that's accessible by the game engine, and it can blindly say, for all the power-ups on the screen, update them and draw them. And it's as simple as that. So the handler class, we can see, has an update, and it just simply does a for each power-up in on-screen power-ups update. And I send it a copy of the player object and uh, the game time that has elapsed since the last update. And then in the draw, I give it a copy of the sprite, ba uh, sprite batch, and I draw each one of the power-ups on screen. And it's as simple as that. It's a very sleek and uh, simple uh, way to do it. And uh, I can tell you, I cranked out power-ups in uh, a couple hours, and it was done. And going forward, all I need to do is implement this iPowerUp interface and uh, fill in the gaps. So if I, uh, for example, this is the uh, health pack uh, power-up. So when you initialize, I just give it the basic X and Y and height. Uh, I then go into uh, the Power Up Animations XML, which uh, tells it how to draw and how to uh, animate the Power Ups. And then I set set it to the uh, Health Pack Large uh, is the animation state I want to show. Basically, the Sprite Sheet is one large image that has all the Power Ups on it. And then the different animations are the different uh, Power Ups themselves. So I have an animation called Health Pack Large that uh, is on a single sprite sheet. So that's what's loaded in in this case. And then for draw, I can say if it's not collected, I go grab my frame from the animation handler. Uh, I handle any kind of uh, offsets and flips, and then I draw it. And then likewise on the update method, I check whether or not it was collected. Uh, I update the animation handler with the, uh, the time since uh, last update. I'm then going to get uh, two rectangles. I'm going to grab the player rectangle based on their attributes and I'm going to make a rectangle of myself uh, being the power up. If those two intersect, I'm going to play a sound that says energy unit. Play that sound. I'm going to increase the player's hit points by 25 and make sure they don't go beyond the max. I say that this has now been collected and I tell the power up handler uh, that I have been collected so then it can handle all the garbage collection and things like that. And that's it. These are power-ups. As you can see, like maybe 10, 12 lines of code and we're able to crank out yet another power-up. So I was uh, very happy with the way this turned out. Um, as soon as I had the framework built, I cranked out, I want to say like 10 or 12 power-ups in one evening. And uh, it can only get easier from here. So. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on how you might implement uh, similar things in your game. And finally, uh, let's get to the Q&A section and uh, see what you guys had to say. Okay, so I'm trying something new this video, and uh, my thought is that I want to bring in my Twitter followers and my YouTube followers and kind of mix them all together. So I reached out on Twitter and I said that I was taking questions and suggestions for this video and that I would re read and respond to them in the video. Uh, so, got some responses. Eddie Bytes mentioned, uh, tell us what made you go for the Game Boy-esque look, and then how do you envision Rad Raygun looking as a finished game? Uh, I mentioned this in the very first video when I started working on this game. I didn't have a theme or um, a name or anything for the game. I just knew that I wanted to make a 2D platformer that was an, just a really... Uh, tongue-in-cheek nod to retro gaming. So something that was very much an homage to uh, my childhood and what was what I think is the best uh, era in gaming. Um, and to kind of uh, give it a caricature. And to do that, I went back to the most simplest form, and that was the Game Boy, the old green palleted Game Boy with huge pixels and uh, four colors, four shades of green. And to me, that's just, it's just fun. And... Uh, how I envision Rad Raygun looking as a finished game. Well, that's the first part, is the, the Game Boy retro look, and I think that's going to hopefully invite users to go download it and check it out and just kind of say, hey, what is this? I'm interested. It looks, it looks fun. 
but then also I want to keep them at the table. And in doing that, that comes through with the, uh, the in-depth storyline, uh, the fun gameplay, and then unlockable awardments. So it, it's hopefully going to just be a complete polished game. That is my, my goal. My goal is to make this uh, the most uh, elaborate and most successful True Fun Entertainment game that I've ever released. The next question came in from Ryu Shinyama. He said, I'd like to know what you log and how you use it to kill bugs. So, I'll be honest, it's nothing elaborate. Basically, I have the update method and the draw method are completely wrapped in a try-catch. And then, if anything is, uh, if any exceptions are encountered, I just log that to a text file. Uh, what What's helpful in that is when I, the level editor is building out the levels, if he encounters a le, uh, encounters an error, he can send me that text file complete with line numbers, and then I can go look it up to see exactly what happened. Uh, the other part of that that we have is uh, for the tile editor. So when you're loading in a map, um, specifically if there are any tiles that it's trying to load in that it can't, I'll log that. Um, and that's something that he won't have to send me the file. He can see exactly what tiles weren't loaded in successfully. Uh, and finally, uh, we use bitbucket.org. Uh, I encourage you all to hop out there. Um, there's free uh, code repositories, so you can uh, upload your source code. But they also have a built-in issue tracker. So as soon as either one of us encounters bugs, we log into Bitbucket, log the error, then you can assign it to one another. You can watch, you can track all the progress, and it's been, it's coming real handy. You encounter something, you can set it, forget it, and come back at any time and resolve the bug. The next is from Cyberwolf. Why are there no Duke Nukem strippers in the game? Well, first of all, who said there aren't? And uh, second, yet yeah, no. Um, sorry. I want Rad Raygun to be E for everyone. I want it to be inviting to all gamers. And uh, as much as I love pixels and I love strippers, I can't put giant pixelated strippers in my game. Sorry. And uh, Cyberwolf... Um, I'll see it work, jackass. And another question from Ryu Shinyama. He said, will Rad have vehicles like a motorcycle level or a jetpack? What kind of additions slash changes to the code would this take? Um, yes and no. So no, there aren't any vehicles, uh, but yes, there will be a jetpack. So I don't know exactly what abilities you're going to have with the jetpack and where it's going to be relevant because we haven't just fleshed that part of the game out yet. But uh, it's definitely coming. Uh, having vehicles, it's interesting. Um, it's got I got some gears turning, but at this time, no, there are no plans for vehicles. Um, and as to what additions or changes would this take to the code? Well, we know enabling it would be easy. As we saw in the power ups, I could have a jetpack power up and a simple uh, boolean flag inside the player object jetpack enabled, yes or no. And then in the update method, if jetpack enabled do this. So it should be pretty easy to implement either way. Good question. Uh, and that was all the questions that we had for this section. Uh, hopefully in the next video we'll get even more feedback from you guys. Um, and finally, one thing I wanted to kind of give a reminder or maybe a first notice to you guys is uh, True Front Entertainment does have a game already on the market. Bop and Pop is now out there on Xbox Live Indie Games. Uh, it's a puzzle game, kind of similar to uh, Super Puzzle Fighter. Um, this is a game I wrote like 10 or 12 years ago, uh, back in the Pascal C++ days. And uh, I've just ported it to every language. And uh, this version of it is definitely the most uh, complete. And uh, it's one to four players, you hop on, and you can compete against one another. And it's a simple game, but it's fun. And I still to this day hop on and play it for a few hours, and it is quite addictive. So uh, look for it, uh, download the trial, and if you like it, it's only a buck. So uh, give it a shot, support the team, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, look, um, update time once again. This is stupid. So... Hey guys, uh, it's update. Fuck. Hey, what's up, guys?
guys. Hey, it's update time once again. I feel like I'm doing this to talk to you, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, most notably, it is the size of Red. Fucking A. Hello. Hello. Uh. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, lots of hat. Fuck. Really? And, uh, that's about it. I'm boring the shit out of you at this point. I've lost you.